Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, regarding the non-spatial data. So far we have discussed uh, that uh, data in GIS can be divided in two main categories. One is a spatial one and another one is non-spatial one, the non-spatial one which we will discuss in detail today. And we have already covered vector data, different types of vector data, raster data, tin data. We have also uh, discussed the comparison between vector data, raster data. We have also gone through the uh, comparison between raster and tin. Now, uh, let us uh, focus on uh, the attribute data and uh, which is non-spatial data. As you know that uh, with each uh, uh, vector data, whether it is point line polygon, theoretically we can store n number of attributes. So, first uh, uh, as you know that uh, this is also in uh, you know very simple language we say as tabular data because it, it is uh, stored in a form of table in GIS uh, or in GIS database as well. So, we call them as tabular data. Now, each uh, geographic feature whether say point line or polygon or vector entity ha can have more than one or uh, more than one attribute. And uh, basically the purpose of keeping this to identify that particular feature. Not only identify that means not only keeping its uh, unique ID inside the database, inside our tables, but also the description of the data. If we take an example of a point data, then a point data will have uh, the uh, a special ob, a special information that is the x y coordinates but in a, tab, a table form it will have it can have n number of attributes so starting from its id maybe its uh, ground dimensions and if i take example of say ground water well then it will have uh, you know the who owns the well what is the depth of the well uh, what are the different water levels uh, during monsoon pre monsoon, post monsoon and if I am having information about the water quality of that particular well, I can store in other columns as well. So, uh, basically to describe not only identify that feature that what it is and uh, also other informations about that particular feature or some magnitude, maybe, uh, maybe the chemical qualities. Maybe if I am dealing with earthquake epicenters, then uh, special information that x, y coordinates are here, each uh, I can assign id, then occurrence of the earthquake, maybe the date, maybe the magnitude, maybe the, the depth of focal depth and so on so forth, all kind of details I can get associated with a point data. Similarly, we can also do for line data as well as polygon data. And uh, this uh, uh, more uh, rich uh, our attributes are, more information about each vector entity when we are having, then we can uh, later on in the analysis, we can really take lot of advantages. So, theoretically our uh, GIS system should support n number of columns or in, from database point of view n number of fields against each uh, uh, such objects. And uh, then uh, in analysis part, we can take advantage of. Remember this that in case of raster data, we can have only one single attribute, but in case of vector data, theoretically we can have n number of attributes. Now, uh, basically if we start looking different types of attributes, like we have seen different types of vectors, different types of rasters. Of course, in case of 10, there is no other types of uh, tin are there is a single type of tin, but in case of attributes basic six kinds of or six types of attributes so far have been implemented into GIS. Maybe in uh, literature you may find some little different numbers, but uh, if you look carefully you would find that we can maximum categorize into six categories. Uh, so, let us go one by one, one the first one in this category is the nominal or we also called as category. Then the another one is the ordinal and ranks, we will see in detail about each of such type of attributes, then interval, then ratio, cyclic and counts and amounts. So, these six types of basic attributes exist or have been implemented so far 
into GIS. If new development takes place, if new type of data start coming, then probably in future we will see one more type or few more types of uh, attributes. But uh, whatever the uh, so far uh, different types of attributes which can come into GIS, which we handle today, all can be uh, handled using either one or two types of uh, these uh, attributes. So, let us look the first one which is the nominal attribute. Nominal attribute like in English grammar we say uh, you know the proper noun is a name and uh, there may not be any you know sequence or order. So, there is a simplest type of attribute described by its name and the purpose here is to identify that object using that name uh, or distinguish one entity from another and no specific order. So, this, this is underlined part here is that in nominal attributes no specific order. Though you may arrange uh, say names in alphabetically order or in seniority order or some other order, but, uh, 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 but uh, from attributes point of view, from GIS point of view, these attributes nominal attributes do not have any orders. If you, if you, if you are using already using like Excel or some other database or GIS, you would find when, when you start putting the data in attribute and if you do not do not define the type of data which is going to come in each uh, uh, column, then normally it will go as a nominal data by default. That means uh, it does not have any order and once it does not have any order, it is simple name and that means also that lot of arithmetic operations cannot be performed on nominal types of data. But uh, sometimes you, we have to use because this is easy and uh, easy to understand, easy to identify for examples, maybe you, uh, you might be using a map in which you are keeping different types of categories of land use, maybe soil, maybe forest or geological names. Places names again these are proper noun, they are known uh, if, even if you order them does not have any meaning that the two adjacent alphabetically ordered uh, places will be geographically will be located adjacently, it is not true. So, the places names, names of houses and also even if you use numbers and put them in nominal, though they are numbers you might feel that I can do some arithmetic operations. Even then if you perform arithmetic operations on say uh, driver's license number, like if I add two driver license number and the third one will the, the output or the, uh, the value which will come through the addition of two dri driving license number will not carry any meaning. So, nominal attributes are just simple to describe or identify certain uh, properties, certain features on the map or distinguish them from one entity to another without any specific order. Now, the next one comes, uh, oh sorry, the in categories are groups for similar things. This one has to remember that these are grouped together in a for of similar things. These help to organize and make sense of your data. All features with the same value for a category are like in the same way and different from and different features. And each serves only to identify. The main purpose here is to identify. There is a like a proper noun in typical English grammar and nominal attributes include can include numbers, can include letters, both or even colors or pattern, but they will not have any meaning here. And even though a nominal attribute can be numeric as I have given already example that it makes no sense to apply arithmetic operations to it. For example, adding two nominal attributes such as two drivers license number creates nonsense. An example I have taken from a map of IIT Rurki, which was prepared on GIS platform and uh, I have categorized different buildings in different categories. Though I have ordered them here in alphabetical order, but that does not mean that geographically they have got any uh, order or relationship, nothing. For example, uh, this is the color scheme which we uh, have followed is uh, uh, internationally followed color scheme by the architectures. So, the red color is showing the central administration, main administration, residences, staff residences are shown in yellow color and so on and so forth. So, this is how 
a map when you apply or when you use the uh, the buildings uh, as a, a category or nominal attribute then you can uh, display like this you can assign any color but uh, if you if you follow some standard color scheme then this is how it may turn up we will see the example when instead of using a nominal attribute when we change the attribute to another type how these buildings or they uh, their appearance will come differently so the second one is the ordinal or ranks as name applies it must be having order so list of discrete classes but with an inherent or natural order or sequence as is diagram also shown here in this uh, schematic that you might be having first ranking second ranking third ranking that means there is a order and there is a meaning between first and second there is a meaning between first and uh, third as well so the examples in real world in uh, our uh, 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 in like in earth sciences we see the order of streams maybe first order second order third order and when we say when we say third order streams we know that what is the status of third order that means there are two more higher orders streams exist and so on so forth so that means there is a inherent order or natural sequence exist with the data in case of nominal no order and another example can be level of education like primary secondary undergraduate postgraduate doctoral post doctoral so all this once we say a somebody is postgraduate that means he has done undergraduate so there is a order and he is following that order is a kind of stairs is a sequence is there and the ranks uh, put features in order from higher to lower depends on your requirement sometimes we also put lower to higher ranks are used when direct measures are difficult or if the quantity represents a combination of factors and since the ranks are relative because it has got a relationship the first rank and second rank has got some meaning so you only know where the feature falls in the order you don't know how much higher or lower a value is than the value because uh, if if i have already uh, mentioned the highest one then i don't know the what other higher uh, things are there suppose if i if i say the person has done graduation but i all, if i don't have information whether he has done post graduation or doctoral then that that is the only information which i am having at that stage anyway so one can rate this uh, uh, maybe in the agricultural land different types of uh, soils a uh, class 1 which are the best class 2 not so good and so on so forth so you can rank them and adding or taking ratios of such numbers makes little sense they you can represent ranks through numbers but again uh, performing arithmetic operations may not uh, bring any results for example since not two is not twice as much as anything as one but at least uh, ordinal attributes have inherent order not like nominal attributes which do not have any order now averaging makes no sense as i have already mentioned that arithmetic operations will not make any sense so far neither in nominal attributes not in ordinal attributes but the median or other values such as the half of the attributes are higher ranked or higher lower ranked is effective substitute for average for ordinal data so it has got very limited uh, use in case of if you want, want to perform arithmetic operations now let's take the same example of iit roorkee map and uh, i have ranked the buildings on their based on their construction quality just just putting them you know uh, may not be in real sense this it is reflecting anything but just for representation and what we are seeing that there are certain buildings which are i have ranked them as excellent some are having fair good and so there is now ranking there is some inherent order in the representation now the third attribute is interval so as we go higher in higher attributes there will be some addition in the uh, condition or a, a about the understanding of these attributes like a, in in case of nominal there were no uh, uh, sequence or order or uh, begin or end was there but here now in case of attributes uh, which are interval attributes have natural sequence so one higher degree 
in case of ordinal we had some order here too is a natural sequence but in addition now one more thing has been added here that the distance between values have meaning and the example is like a scale of celsius temperature is interval and interval because it makes sense to say 30 and 20 degree are the same having the same difference as the 20 and 10 there is a difference of 10. So, there is a, a, a the interval uh, attribute will have natural sequence 1 and in addition it will have the distance between values will have the meaning an example is also given here for the pH scale as well that is also an interval scale. Now, the fourth type of attribute is a ratio attributes uh, that have the same characteristics as interval variables. But in addition, so all those two conditions inherent order and uh, the difference with uh, distance between uh, two values have the meaning plus in addition there is a it will have a 0 or a starting point. So, like here uh, in a, a scale um, uh, for the representing some distance it is having a 0 and this is how we generally in the maps we put a scale bar we put a 0 and some value on the right hand side. So, likewise it will have a order it is having a sequence plus it is having a meaning like uh, 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 2 minus 1 is 1 kilometer same would be the 3 minus 2 equal to 1 kilometer and in addition it will have a starting point and 0. For example, rainfall per month. So, rainfall and the weight or weight is a ratio because it makes sense to say that a person of 100 kg is twice as heavy as a person of 50 kg. So, there is a 0 value, there is a starting point plus all those things which are, which are there in the ratio are all here and the Celsius temperature is only interval because 20 is not twice as the 10. And this argument applies to all scales that are based on similarly arbitrary 0 points including latitude longitude which we use in our uh, GIS maps. Now, the fifth uh, attribute in this category is directional or cyclic this is very very important in GIS because uh, the latitude longitude which we, we are using is, is a cyclic same is the like time is also a cyclic and uh, therefore, the handling though they are these are also numeric values, but their handling uh, within GIS is very very important very carefully these should be handled. We will see the examples here that uh, sometimes it is necessary to deal with the data that can be directional or cyclic. One more type of data in geological sciences or in, in civil engineering we use for directions a bearing. So, bearing is also a directional type data it has to be handled differently and it has to be declared before we enter into the system properly it should be declared that now data which is going to come in this particular column or field in my database is directional data because their normal arithmetic operations cannot be performed. We will see the example that like including flow direction on a map or a compass direction or longitude. So, all will uh, all will complete one cycle may be at 360 degree may be at 90 degree may be like time it will complete in at 60 seconds and then it becomes 1 minute. So, it is a cyclic data let us take this example of that the special problem that when 359 and is 0 after 359 0 comes not 360 d and it, in case of degrees and averaging two directions such as 359 and plus 1 it is 180 and that would be the just opposite direction. So, that means on directional data simple arithmetic operations cannot be performed otherwise you will go instead of north you will may you may lead towards the south and it will give you a completely opposite uh, direction. So, it has to be very carefully handled directional data in GIS all modern GIS softwares are nowadays capable to handle directional data very easily, but you have to declare to the system and accordingly you have to handle the data. And uh, there were uh, when uh, year 2000 year e about to come in the year 99 
people realize before that there will be some problem because in that time the operating system used to store for year only last two digits. So, after 99 if we would not have changed our operating system then after 99 the double zero would have come for the year. Now, double zero may be meaning of 1900, maybe 1800, maybe 2000. So, later on this problem was solved by instead of keeping two digits, two last digits for the year, we started storing four digits for the uh, year and then this solve, problem was solved. But this problem is very famous problem of that time. It is known as the Y2K bug and uh, because of uh, this reason. Another set of problems will arise uh, because uh, in GIS instead of using degree minutes and second data, we convert this data into DD and once the DD is converted then arithmetic operations can be performed easily. Now before that we have to be because this is cyclic data. So, third, uh, 60 seconds will, be, uh, will become your 1 minute and 60 minutes will become 1 degree. So, this uh, instead of having a 0 to 60 scale, if we rescale 0 to 100, then it becomes DD. And then DD, uh, this degree decimal data is, uh, is falling in decimal system and then all kinds of arithmetic operations can be performed. So, in GIS when we use the geographic data, in geographic projection, we use instead of DMS, we use uh, DD. And it is, it is quite easy uh, uh, to convert uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, DMS that means degree minute seconds to DD by just uh, applying a simple concept and calculations. Like if I am having uh, say 77 degree 30 minutes and 15 seconds and I want to convert this is DMS format, I want to convert in DD then what you have to do you can multiply by 60 and multiply by 60 because we have to bring everything to the second that is our you, you know the least count or the unit here then 30 multiply by 60 and then you add 15 whatever you will get you divide that one by 3600 and then you will get here is dd and then arithmetic operations can be performed easily. So, modern days GIS are capable of converting from DMS to DD and vice versa. Otherwise, if not then simple tools can be used, simple concept can be used to convert them and put them in DD. So, later on you can change it or keep it and then even arithmetic operations can also be performed. Like an example one of the uh, earlier very popular GIS softwares or in ArcGIS which is modern days very popular GIS software, the data measured in ratio or interval scales are type number. That means uh, when you put in the attribute table, you put them as number, as numeric value. Uh, that is why the word type number is used. While the data measured at ordinal or nominal scales are type string. That means you are declaring to the system that my data can come in uh, strings that maybe have alphabets or alphanumeric. So, uh, this is how you declare in case of by before entering the data. And uh, in uh, uh, these functions are used in, in this particular software to as a, a string or as number that can be used to convert attribute data between numeric and string forms. Now, one thing one has to be uh, remember that uh, when you are creating your own uh, GIS database, different columns or different fields in your database, their value, their properties has to have to be declared very properly. Even if you are using Excel. And if you know that my data is going to be cyclic data, declare as that it is going to be the date. So, that later on you will not have problems. But if you do not declare, then by default it will take as a nominal data. And then later on if you convert that nominal data to interval or ratio, you might have lot of problems. So, it is better before entering the data if it is possible 
properly think that what kind of data is going to come in that particular field and declare the properties accordingly. One more thing is that if you are bringing the decimal data and that too is the real numbers, then you have to be also careful by declaring the number of places after decimal. If you know that your data is not going to come up to fourth places of decimal, then do not put in the format fourth place because unnecessary it creates a redundancy in the data and later on during your analysis it might give you lot of problems. And uh, because if you reduce later on it may bring some problems or if you increase the number of places again it might bring problems. So, better to understand that first what kind of data is going to come in this particular field and accordingly you must define, uh, define the definition or properties of that field including your decimal places. So, later on you do not encounter any problem like rounding of problems or other thing because if you convert after a data has been entered in a particular field and if you convert from one format to another or one properties to another you will bring some errors in data and that might create lot of problems later on. So, it is always better to think first and then add the data inside your column. Now, the last uh, type of attribute is counts and amounts and uh, there sometimes that uh, you want to show the total numbers and uh, in a particular field as a attribute and the count is the actual number of features on the map and then amount can be any measurable quantity associated with a feature for example, number of a student in a class and using a count or amount lets you see the actual value of each feature as well as its magnitude compared to other features. So, sometimes you want to store that data as counts or amounts and therefore, you go for this kind of attribute declaration. Example I am giving here that a, this is a, a district level map of Himachal Pradesh and this is census data of 91 does not matter even if you are having 2011 data scenario might be same and this is the total count in the each blay, each district of the people or the population district wise population. So, like here uh, there are two districts and uh, there the range is also given and their total count is between this and that, between this range. Similarly, there are uh, there are uh, uh, districts which are having say light green color and their total count is falling between these ranges. So, here uh, it becomes much easier to understand if you use this kind of attribute that uh, which type of uh, you know which district having or which districts are having what kind of uh, total number of populations. So, uh, using a, a properly declaring your attributes and then bringing the data and later on you can use very well for different purposes. So, this brings to the end of uh, this presentation. Thank you very much.